In this video, I wanted to quickly show you how you could set up a very quick and easy to implement rag endpoint that goes ahead and scrapes some of the top search results of a query that a user has to the endpoint. So all of this is gonna be set up with a bun server. And what you're gonna be able to do is you'll be able to have a post request with all of these different options. And depending on what you pass within your post request, you'll get the similarity search results as well as the LLM results, which take in the similarity search results to generate them. So I'll go in uh, to this uh, a lot more in depth as I go through this. It's only gonna be about 100 lines of code to get this all set up. I'll also be posting a GitHub repository link to this. Uh, feel free to do whatever you like with this and hopefully it helps uh, in some understanding and different approaches on how you could set something like this up. So the first thing that we're gonna do is you can go ahead and bun init a project. Uh, so just run within your terminal, bun init, go through the prompts. I'm gonna be using JavaScript in this. You can use TypeScript if you want. Once you have it set up, you can go ahead and create a .env. Within your .env, we're gonna be using the OpenAI API. We're gonna be using that for embeddings as well as GPT 3.5 Turbo. And then once you have that all plugged in, just go ahead and make an account on Brave. If you don't have one, you get 2000 free uh, search queries per month uh, that you can use uh, in, in this implementation to try it out. So once you have that set up, go within your index.js and we're just gonna start to run through it here. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna import a handful of things. So don't worry about these things too, too much. I'm gonna get into them as we actually get into the code here. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna initialize both OpenAI and the embeddings endpoint. Then we're going to first just set up a simple bun server. So I'm using port 3005 because I have something running on port 3000. Feel free to use whatever open port you have. And then what we're going to do is we're going to have our fetch request here and then we're gonna be looking for a post request. So we're essentially gonna just ignore, send back a message if it's not a post request uh, indicating so. So first we're just going to log out a handful of things. So uh, throughout the application, as you see in my terminal here, I'm gonna be logging out in order of the operations th that are being executed. So you hopefully understand uh, what's going on and the process of everything um, going on uh, in order. And you can go ahead and remove these console logs after the fact if, if you like, but I'll just leave them in to hopefully help demonstrate this. So once we have that all set up, uh, we're gonna just extract and destructure some of the messages and we're also gonna set some of the defaults if they aren't already passed. So things like chunk size, uh, text overlap, uh, the uh, return the LLM results. So all of these are different options that you can turn on and off depending on what you're uh, likely wanting from your API request. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're going to take the input from the message and we're just gonna go ahead and ask GPT 3.5 Turbo to rephrase it. Now, the reason that we're gonna do this is hopefully that we're going to get a better result than what's just passed within the raw message. So imagine this is a chat application and someone says, what is the news? With maybe some other information, this a function here, uh, we're essentially asking the LLM, just give us a better uh, query for a search engine. So this is sort of optional. You don't necessarily need this, but this is just uh, an extra step that you can have in there that hopefully will help this perform a little bit better. Now, next, we're going to define our search engine function. So we're gonna log out that we're initializing the process. We're gonna set up our loader for Brave. Then we're going to call and await the rephrased message. So it's not gonna continue on until this is received. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and specify from Brave the number of results that we want and pass in the rephrase message that we got from GPT 3.5 Turbo. So once we have that, we're just gonna go ahead and normalize the data. So I went ahead and excluded anything that included brave.com. The reason for that is when I asked for uh, news results, it was returning results from Brave, and that wasn't something that I necessarily wanted. So this is just an example of how you could do something like that if you wanted to exclude some other links. So then we're just gonna parse through the data. So there's a number of things within the response uh, that you can go ahead and use if you like. In our case, we're just gonna be using the link in the title. 
So once we've go, gone ahead and normalized the data, we're gonna go ahead and fetch the page content. So the, the fetch page content, all that we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be making a simple get request to the page. And the one thing to note with this is if the website is using something like uh, a modern framework, there is the possibility that it's not going to parse because you might need to use something like Puppeteer to load in that response. But we're just gonna keep this really lightweight and in the event that it, uh, it has sort of an indication that it is from a modern framework or it's not able to parse for whatever reason, we're just gonna skip over that result. So once we have that, we're gonna go ahead and just do a quick removal of some of the things that we don't need. So because we're likely asking questions that are related to the text on the page, we can remove things like script tags, style tags, the head tag, even the nav, footer, things like that, because they're probably not pertinent to the question that's being asked. All right, so next we're gonna go ahead and process and vectorize the content. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna establish the vector count and ensure that we are only doing the number of vectors and pages that are specified from what we pass in to our post request. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and fetch the page contents. Then we're going to wait for each of the page contents to be returned. Once we have that, we're gonna go ahead and do just a very crude and simple check to make sure that there's at least 250 characters worth of text. You could likely even bump this up higher to essentially just ignore those pages because we don't want to use those. And we will essentially wanna skip over those ones because we know that they're likely not web pages that have content that we're gonna uh, be able to parse. So once we have that, we're gonna go ahead and break up our text with the recursive character text splitter from Langchain. So we're gonna be able to specify the chunk size from the post request, the chunk overlap, and then we'll be splitting up all of that HTML content within it. So once we have that, we're gonna go ahead and from those chunk contents, uh, we're going to go ahead and store those and create vectors of them and create memory of vector stores for each of them. And then we're essentially gonna be repeating this process over and over uh, uh, until they're all done. So once that's done and we've created vectors and embeddings of everything, we're gonna go ahead and perform our similarity search. So we're gonna pass in the message as well as the number of results that we want uh, to show here. So once we have that, we're gonna go ahead and process all the normalized data. Then from there, we're going to fetch and process our sources. So what we're gonna do is this is gonna be where we actually go ahead and invoke the search engine process. And from there, we're going to get that last response and we're going to say, okay, we have all of our sources and we're going to prepare our response here. So in our right before our last response here, we're essentially preparing the content to respond with. Um, into our LLM. So we're gonna say, here's the top results from our similarity search. Here, we're gonna stringify all the sources. And then based on those similarity search results, here's the query, respond back ideally in a sentence or two. So one thing to note is the LLMs are going to be the biggest bottlenecks in the application. So if you remove the rephraser, that will help speed this up. And then if you try and pass in fewer similarity search results in here as well as asking for something like a brief response, this will perform faster. So that's why I have respond within a sentence or two. So once we've done that, we're essentially going to call our chat completion. We're gonna pass in what we had just declared above here, and then we're going to log out that we've sent the results for chat completion. Finally, we're gonna set up our response object and then we're going to check the uh, particulars of the post request here. And so if the return LLM results is within that destructured uh, variable above, uh, it will return it. If not, it won't. And then we're essentially going to log out the final uh, message here that we're constructing the response and finally send it out. Then next, uh, like I mentioned at, early on in the video, we're only going to be using this on post requests, obviously, and then we're just gonna log out a message. So if someone tries to make a get request or something like that, we're just going to have a message that logs out. Finally, we're just gonna log out that the server is listening on the port once the application is run. So once you've actually bun index.js and started the server. 
So from there, you can go ahead and query it. So if I just query this again, what is the news? You see that it will run through, it will start to extract the page contents, it will log out all the different steps here, and then you'll get the LLM uh, result as well as the similarity results. So this will give you an idea of what's being passed to the LLM. In here you see I'm asking just for uh, two pages to be scanned and just a f a one similarity result, but say if we want five similarity results and then four pages to be scanned, and then we could even bump up the text size to let's say 300. You'll see that it will go ahead, scan a, a number or four of the pages here, and then you'll see that the similarity results are much, much longer. Now, the thing to note is there is a context limit, obviously, and if you're scanning a number of pages, you might want to remove something like ideally respond in a sentence or two, because you might be looking for more than just that content. But like I said, if you're looking to do that, it will take a little bit longer to respond. So just a quick, simple one today. Hopefully you found this useful. If you did, please like, comment, share, and subscribe. Otherwise, until the next one.